The Kenyan president, Uhuru Kenyatta, today insisted that there is no crisis in his country. Kenyatta's assertion comes after demonstrations by the opposition party that led to two people being shot dead and dozens others injured. The president uh, was speaking to thousands of supporters at a rally about 150 kilometers north of Nairobi. The withdrawal of the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, from the presidential election rerun scheduled for October 26 has thrown the country into further political turmoil. The Tibetan activist groups have accused the Chinese President Xi Jinping of taking things in Tibet from bad to worse. The executive director of Students for a Free Tibet today said at a joint news conference in India's northern hill town of Dharamsala that the Chinese president is indeed an oppressor. The outcry comes as Beijing prepares for its 19th Congress where Xi will map out his ambitions for the country for the next five years and beyond. Tibetans have long waged a struggle against Chinese rule in Tibet. Actually, if you know about the Barka series in Indian, uh, you know, produced by the NCRT, so this is adapted from there, but uh, it's actually on the pattern of the Bagu series, but it is totally uh, content-wise and also written in Tibetan for the children. Uh, you know, so it's kind of uh, uh, you know making up for children's uh, literature in uh, Tibetan schools. We do not have sufficient you know reading materials, particularly story books for the children. So this is an effort uh, to fill up. Malta's best-known investigative journalist Daphne Caruana Galizia has been killed in a car bomb attack. She led the Panama Papers investigation and ran a hugely popular blog where she highlighted cases of alleged corruption, often involving politicians from Malta. Police say that she was killed as she was driving in rural Malta and uh, when her car blew up. The car was destroyed by the powerful explosive device which... Uh, blew it up into several pieces, throwing the debris into a nearby field. According to local media reports, Galizia filed a police report 15 days ago saying that she'd been receiving death threats. She claimed to have no political affiliations and set her sights on a wide range of targets from banks facilitating money laundering to links between Malta's online gaming industry and the mafia. Maltese Prime Minister Joseph Muscat, who faced accusations of wrongdoing by Galizia earlier this year, denounced her killing, calling it a barbaric attack on press freedom. He also called early elections in June as a vote of confidence to counter Galizia's allegations of corruption. Meanwhile, some 3,000 people gathered for a solemn vigil on Monday evening to mourn her death. Coalition forces have made big gains against the Islamic State's terrorists in Syria. The U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces today raised flags in Al Naim Square in Raqqa. Remember, Raqqa was once the capital of the self-proclaimed caliphate of the terror group Islamic State. The war monitor, Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, too, has said that Raqqa has been cleared of the terrorists. The Islamic State has now been reduced to a few pockets in both Iraq and Syria, and this has raised the hopes of families of those abducted. Indians, 39, were abducted from Iraq three years ago. With most of Syria and Iraq now accessible, the efforts to trace those 39 Indians could gather momentum.